<laughs> listen, listen. Okay, <laughs> my room is a little bit messy, so I'm hiding it. <laughs> Traditionally, this is what we do at Elements. We eat. We eat. <laughs> we always hate people. Sure. All right, we're uh, we're gonna do a couple of songs, and the first one is uh, if you could do anything, Lord. Um, we're going to do the mashup that we created, um, the mashup we created with Made Away, so it, it, it switches in. And I just thought, um, I just thought it was a good, a good song to begin with. Um, yeah, I thought it was a good song to begin with, because if God can use anything, especially in this time, he can use you and I. Now, he's used so many other non-living uh, things and animals. Why can't he use us? And then the mashup goes into, you made a way, right? And I just thought, man, if we could grasp it in our hearts that God is making a way, then we'll be just fine. If we can hold on to that. Amen? So let's pray. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, we come before you. Just asking that you would be with us as we share today, as we sing today, as we worship as we spend a little time breaking bread virtually together, Father, we just ask that your spirit be with us. Just, just guide us. And, uh, and more than anything, God, we open up our hearts and our minds to what you have for us. So we invite you, invite you to be uh, front and center here today, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can use anything. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, take my feet, touch my heart, Lord. To me, you can use anything, Lord. You can use me. Let's do that again. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, take my feet, touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. You can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Because you made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over. Standing here only because you made a way. You made a way. You made a way. When our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over, you made a way. And we're standing here. Only because you made you move mountains, you cause walls to fall with your power. Perform miracles, there is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you made you move mountains, you move mountains. I'm sorry. You cause walls to fall with your power. Perform miracles, there is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here 
only because you made a way. Let's go back to the top. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you could use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, take my feet. Take Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. I was watching um, my friend, uh, Pastor David Holder, up in New York Coven. Some of you guys know him, in particular the men with the men's retreats with them. And he said, um, he was talking about God using us in this time. And don't worry, I, I wrote that I would be biting it. But he says something profound. He says, oh, you don't need to advertise the good deeds you do, especially in this time, but to make sure that while we're behind closed doors, we do them. Now, it's something to be said if a, gr a group of us gather, we want others to help us do these great deeds, that's different. But he was talking about what you do yourself, just you. And I thought to myself, well, we're all behind closed doors, right? But this way, at least in this way, we can, um, we can meet up and we can talk to people. Earlier, Carmen said, it's so good to see faces. And I think that's important. And so I'm asking you to allow God to use you in this way, at least, during this time, because man, there's so many people. I think about all our single moms. And I'm trying to reach out to them a couple of times a week. Some of them I don't leave alone, like Sheena and Marilyn. <laughs> so, uh, you know, let's do that, man. Let's, let's, let's be God's hands and feet. Because if he could use anything, he can use you and me. And so let's, behind closed doors, let's do what he asks, right? Touch my heart, Lord. Speak through me. I'm sorry, I'm all messed up. Take my hand, Lord, take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. You can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I think most of you will know this one. I'm just going to jump right in. I'll get to it later. My God is awesome in the mountains, in the valley, hide me from the rain. Let's do that again. My God is awesome, he can move mountains, keep me in the valley, hide me from the rain. Again. God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. He hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened. Forever he will reign. My God is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome again. My God is awesome, 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 awesome. Verse 2. My God is awesome, Savior of the whole world, giver of salvation. By his stripes and healed. My God is awesome. Today I am forgiven. His grace is for I'm living. Praise his holy name. My God is awesome. 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 My God is awesome. 
Because you truly are awesome, Lord. You are awesome. You are awesome. You're awesome in this place, in that 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 place, in every one of these places. You are awesome, God. You are awesome. And we thank you so much for being God. Hallelujah. You are awesome and mighty and holy and great and deliverer and provider and protector. You are all of these things, God. And we are so grateful. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We're going to close out with one more song. Uh, I, I would love for my backup singer to project a little more. She gets into worship and she goes, he's awesome. <laughs> and she gone. She gone. She's in worship. She's loving Jesus. But man, I need some help. All right. <laughs> I'm going to play real loud, so don't be afraid, okay? Great are you, Lord. Let's start with you are life. You are life. You give love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Again, you give life. You are love. Come on, baby. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore. Every heart that is broken with life, you are love. I know I messed you up. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore. Here we go. Every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. You give light. Darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. It's your prayer in my lungs, so we pour out. Pour out our praise, pour out our praise. 
praise you God we love you Lord and we thank you for coming together for having the opportunity to come together and worship you collectively your saints gathered here even through zoom Lord God to lift up your mighty name to magnify who you are and to give you glory from the depths of our heart Lord God we thank you Holy Spirit for being present and for leading us in this time of worship Lord God we are excited to hear what you have to say this morning we pray that you soften every heart to receive open every ear to receive and help us to understand, Lord God. Teach us and guide us, Lord God. We thank you again for who you are, Lord God. We thank you for your abounding love, grace, and mercy that never ends, Lord God. We thank you for this time of worship, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Great are you, Lord. Great are you. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. Let me set this up so that uh, Erica is going to be our speaker today. She's going to share with you guys. Um, and we're, we're still in our, uh, we're still in our series of, of the I am statements. And today she's going to share on, I am the door. So I'm really excited for that. Let me find my beautiful lady. There she is. Okay. This is not nerve wracking at all. There you go. Close, close your, I'm going to close your door. Okay, thank you. Okay, man. Um, beautiful worship time and talk about being stretched. This is my first time doing a Facebook Live video, like actually speaking to a camera. And um, I am totally dying to self here. <laughs> totally dying to self, but that's um, next thing you know, I'm going to be wrapping. That'll be the next stage. All right. So as many of you know, at Elements, we're doing the I Am series. And so far, we've spoken on when Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. Um, and last week, our pastor spoke on when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And... Um, Today's focus is going to be on the door. So I, I just want to start off with prayer. Heavenly Father, we glorify you. We love you. We thank you. You are amazing. And we pray right now that although we're physically not together, Lord, that you connect us spiritually with you, with your word. 
And we ask that your Holy Spirit take over, that I just be your mouthpiece, and that you just speak to our hearts, wherever we're at, each and every one of us, um, whether it's on Zoom or Facebook Live, wherever we're at, Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit speak to our hearts right now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so we're going to be reading from the book of John, chapter 10. So it's, we're starting off with verse one. So as you're looking for it, I'm just going to share a little bit. Um, I know this is a familiar Bible passage to a lot of us. Uh, when Pastor Danny spoke a couple weeks back uh, from Lifehouse Community Church, he spoke on the Good Shepherd and he touched on this same chapter. And it was a very encouraging and uplifting message. And when we hear Jesus speaking about that he's the Good Shepherd, that he's the door, the bread of life, all of these um, expressions that he uses, um, metaphors, he, he to, to me, like, it makes me go, oh, Jesus is so sweet, you know, like, man, he loves me, I'm so loved by God, and maybe you feel that way too, I mean, maybe it not, may not be as girly as I am, but the, the, the reaction is feeling loved, feeling secure, nonetheless. But I wanted to highlight what was actually happening in this chapter before Jesus starts speaking. Uh, just a, a couple days before, the Jews were literally picking up stones, to uh, rocks to stone Jesus. Um, and he had to secretly escape from the synagogue, from the temple, because he had told them, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was born, I am. They obviously didn't like that. So they tried to kill him. And then um, he did something that was apparently just as bad. And he healed a blind man on the Sabbath day, the day of, of their rest. It was a, a, a real issue. It was so much of an issue that the, the leaders, the Jewish leaders uh, badgered the, the blind man, the man who was once blind. They badgered him and they um, intimidated them in such a way, like even his parents, that they were trying to find out how he really was healed or if he had really been blind from the beginning, like, like from his birth. And his parents were, were shook. They were scared. They were, they were scared to say what had happened. Um, but they badgered him and, and he did not relent. He kept saying that it was this prophet, Jesus, who had healed him. And when he did that, he was basically put out of the, the synagogue. Um, like in our, our days, he's basically excommunicated from the church. Because Jesus was always in the middle of controversy. Wherever he went, he was controversial because along with performing miracles, he was also calling people out on their sin. And, and I've spoken a little bit about this before, um, but he was calling people out and people don't like to be called out on what they're doing wrong. And what's more is that he was affirming his deity. He was um, saying, he kept telling the fact that he was God and that he was sent by God the Father. Many of the people did not like that. They still don't like that today, which is why Jesus is still controversial. As a result, people were either like loving him or hating him. They were following after him or plotting against him. They were saying he was God sent or declaring him demon possessed. Life was difficult, even for Jesus. So it's during this division of the people it's during um, this controversy where we begin listening to Jesus speak to the Jews in John chapter 10. So verse one, most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up by some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens. And the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of the strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Because remember, they're sheep, they're not too sharp. 
Then Jesus said to them again, most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Blessed be the reading of his word. Sorry, I need some water. If we're already believers in Christ, if we believe Jesus is the son of God who died for our sins and he rose um, from the dead in three days so that we could be saved, then we already walk, we've already walked through the door known as Jesus. Jesus says it in verse nine, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. But I'd like to focus on the rest of verse nine, which says, if anyone enters by me, he will go in and out and find pasture. I love this imagery because it's not a, a, a one-time walking through this door. It's not like, hey, I'm saved and everything's perfect now. He says that we will go in and out the door. That's in and out the door, that's Jesus. To me, that's us living life, but living life in him, living life through him. As beautiful as life can be, it, it can also be difficult. I mean, it could be dark and it can be full of despair, but not in Jesus. Life will always have its difficulties, but the darkness, the despair, that's straight up from the enemy. Jesus says in verse 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. So the enemy wants to steal your joy, he wants to destroy your hope. He wants to kill your faith. And this is what we're literally living out right now through this coronavirus period where fear can be paralyzing. Anxiety can overtake your heart. And before you know it, you find yourself fearful, uh, hopeless, completely forgetting the powerful God we serve and that Jesus is the bread of life that he is the light of the world, that he is the good shepherd, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. He says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. It's one of my favorite verses. I mean, the Bible is, is all like life, but this is like my life verse. He is the door, not only to salvation, but to abundant life. That's life filled with hope and peace, even amidst the chaos. His abundant life is, it's free of fear and it's free of anxiety. He is the door. He doesn't say, I am a door. He doesn't say, I am one of the doors. He is the door. Everything else is false and leaves you susceptible and completely vulnerable to the enemy. When Pastor Danny a couple weeks back spoke on, on, on Psalm 23rd, he shared that the shepherd literally needed to lead the sheep to find a place to eat. That was, that was one of his many jobs. And so he needed to lead them to where they could find their sustenance, where they can find their nourishment. So he leads them to green pastures, not, not dry pastures, not dead pastures, not half-eaten pastures, but green pastures, life-giving pastures. If anyone enters by me, he will go in and out and find pasture. And like, I, I get it. Like, we're all human. We all get scared, especially now more than ever. Scared that our loved ones will get sick and not recover from this virus or if we have underlying issues that we might get sick and not recover, we get scared that we won't have enough food or supplies if everything shuts down. We, if we've been temporarily laid off or if we've had to shut down our business, we get scared that we won't be able to provide for our families. But today, our sweet savior is reminding us that he is the door. Whoever enters by him will find pasture will find sustenance, will find provision. 
No matter what mass hysteria tells us through, the, through social media or the news, the word of God, the word of God tells us that those who enter the door will live an abundant life and have all they need. They have peace. They have provision. They have protection. So I'm going to read that again, but, but with us, we have peace, we have provision, we have protection. He doesn't say it's going to be easy or it's going to be without pain. He just says that his sheep know his voice and that he is the door of the sheep. That if anyone enters by him, he will be saved and he will go in and out and find pasture. Um, my daughter's watching right now. And I hope she doesn't mind me sharing a little something. Is it okay? Can you give me a thumbs up? She's like, I don't know what you're sharing, mom. <laughs> um, but she's been praying almost every night that the enemy just wants to put fear in us. And he wants to separate us. Um, so he wants to separate us by, by closing down church. But that God is bigger than all of this. And that the enemy will not win. And I never told her that. Like, as a matter of fact, the, the first day she said it to me, I almost kind of like brushed it off because we were in the middle of, of reading a book together. But she kept going. She was insistent. And she spoke with authority that the enemy would not win. And I know that the Holy Spirit has been speaking through her and her prayers. He's been speaking to her heart about this. And that's called childlike faith. That's the kind of faith that God calls us to have, that regardless of our circumstance, regardless of what's happening in the world around us, we believe his word. We stand on his promises with confidence and boldness that we will walk in authority. Do we have to be careful with, with proper hygiene? Like, of course, like that should have been already done before this. Um, do we have to be wise with social distancing? Of course, absolutely. But we will not walk through the doors of, of fear and anxiety. We won't walk through those doors because of the promises that he's made to us. That he says, if anyone enters by me, he will be saved and he will go in and out and find pasture. And that he has come so that we may have life and that we may have it more abundantly regardless of what's happening, that we will have abundant life. But the truth is that if you've never surrendered your life to Christ, then it's really hard to have that security of, of peace and protection and provision. It's really difficult. Um, if you've never actually accepted him, then, then this is the perfect time. And I know um, some of people I know here on, on the screen and some people I don't, but I just want to take this opportunity, if we could just pray, because this is the perfect time. No one else is around you. And um, we're just going to pray. We're going to pray. And I'm going to pray two prayers. So this first one. <sighs> if anyone out here is, is feeling like I haven't walked through this door of salvation, then this is, this is your time. And you can pray after me. You can repeat what I say. Dear Jesus, I thank you. I come to you as a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died and rose again so that I could be saved. I ask that you create in me a new heart and make me into a new creation. In Jesus' name, amen. And now I'm just going to pray for anyone out there who is feeling they may have walked through this door, but it's just like, you feel like you, you, he says to go in and out, but you're like going in and out another door. And so I'm asking that your Holy Spirit, Father, right now, whoever is listening, whoever is going through the doors of fear and anxiety, that they're worried that you will not provide. They're worried that you will not protect. They are in need of your peace. I'm asking right now that your Holy Spirit speak to their hearts, that your Holy Spirit just bring about a peace that surpasses all understanding, 
that nobody else understands, that you can't understand how, but from the top of your head to the tip of your toes, that you may be overwhelmed and overcome by his peace, knowing that you may not know what's going on tomorrow, but that you know that God has you, that he is your door, that he will lead you to green pastures, that he will protect you, that he will provide. We stand on your promises. We ask, Lord, that you decrease, that you get, do away with our doubt and that you increase our faith and that you increase our trust in you. Help us to see you. Give us your eyes and your ears to be able to see and to hear you, to see you at work. Fear and anxiety is not of you, but peace is. So we pray peace over our families. We pray peace for over our church family and all those who just are seeking you out. Now is the time. Now is the time. And we thank you, God, that you always hear us and that regardless of our mistakes and how many times we've been in and out the door, but in the wrong way, God, you are always standing there waiting with open arms as the loving father that you are. So we glorify you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, guys. So we have, um, we have a, a gift from Damien. He actually has um, a song he's going to bless us with that is the theme of, of Jesus being the door. So God bless you all. Yeah. Can you all hear me? Give me, um, give me a sign. I need, like the Pharisees, I need a sign. Come on. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, yeah. So um, I'm basically, I'm just going to go over with you, uh, you know, the words of the chorus, because it's a lot of, it's a lot of wordplay. It says, um, it's so funny, because I never thought I'd actually get a chance to do this song. <laughs> it's, um, it's called The Door. So this is perfect. Um, it says, Christ said, come to God through me. Boy, I am the door. Satan's under thy two feet, a door matters all. Christ never ran from beef, no matter the door. Give a hand to the Lord for sin he gave man a cure. So, that, and that's basically is a repetition of that. Um, so give me one second, I just, I'm setting up my, um, my music. Uh, thank you for that word, that word was awesome. Um, okay. See. Yeah. You guys hear the beat okay? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Check it. Christ said, Come to God through me. Boy, I am the door. Satan's under thy two feet. A door matters all. Christ never ran from me. No matter door. Give a hand to the Lord. For sin he gave man a cure. Uh, I said for sin he gave man a cure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't concerned if I turn rich. Long as my words lift and serve him, I'ma be straight here. Lord permit. I'm for the broccoli. I'm on it, poppy. Just want it godly. Order not me pay for everything. You know, origami. The Lord defines me. Won't gamble my hope on she knows. But reach your nose blinded by the chips. Think they could see. No. It's deep, bro. I got saved so much it ain't cheap, though. I was up a freak, no speedboat amigo. Now a free soul in the battle over. Turn the paddle over and he saved me. The waves beat because he wrote. Not just for me, though. They slaughtered the Lord for all of us. Sure enough, my vocal cords saw for praying for loss and just I'll tell men of his glory. I cannot keep it. It's selfish plus corny keeping the pop secret. God's sweet in his least touch. We all enjoy our snicker. He don't need but a finger to bring all men joy. Come to God through me. Boy, I am the door. Satan's under thy two feet. A door matters all. Christ never ran from beef. No matter door. Give a hand to the Lord for sin he gave man a cure. Come to God through me. Boy, I am the door. Satan's under thy two feet. A door matters all. Christ never ran from beef. No matter, dog, give a hand to the Lord for sin he gave man a cure. That out of all can't ignore, cannonballs flash the soul. What removed us from the waste? No cast of all. Chairman table legs had to stand up for every man involved. Could Darwin after all if God had to call? 
they ran the jaws, they chatted, saying my doctrine scattered. They had the gall and they never give it the propaganda. Can't understand, they can't touch with their hands or see Christ the priest. Ah, his genes made it fit for him to leave eyes. They need time, see blind, decline, he's kind. Got between my sins like a chief. They need signs, it's Santa like. How the hand of Christ, gifted man with light. Let him touch and turn you around. Van the white, the camera light, smoke them heavy and quickly. That's history, no magician. I tell you, I'm sick free, like Wrigley's. God choose to spam it when the fresh, big, red, hot cinnamon flaring from hearing. I'll double men this new recruit and pray that all from the Gentile to the juicy fruit. God said, come to God to me. Boy, I am the door, Satan's under thy two feet. A door matters all, Christ never ran from thee. No matter, door, give a hand to the Lord for sin he gave man a cure. Master door. Thank you. Now I'm gonna turn it over to, to Pastor E. Um, so I just wanna say um, thank you all for coming. Uh, next week, um, the plan, I, I gotta sit with the team this week, but got some ideas of some stuff to do. And um, hopefully we'll have a few extra stuff, not just Sundays coming up, um, probably, hopefully, maybe this week, I don't know. But I want to let you know, uh, we're going to be joining with Pastor Danny's church in Brooklyn for men's fellowship. Like we did, a, we did a bring your own breakfast video uh, men's thing, and it was, it was really dope. Each of us had our plate of food, and we were like just eating. It was fantastic. So we're gonna do that again, and um, we're gonna we're gonna see what we do for the ladies. We need we need a, a little help with that. So let's just put our heads together and see what happens. Um, those of you who cannot uh, do not give yet online, you can. Um, you could do it through PayPal on the website, and uh, we have it. We we have a text feature that I was gonna put up here and I completely forgot to do, so forgive me. Um, but if you hit me up, I'll, I'll send it to you. You can give by text. Uh, but it's all on the website, elementschurch.com. Both of those on the website. I'm right, right, Randy? Both, we have, we put, I put both of those, right? Let's, just give me a thumbs up because you're muted. Yeah, yeah, we're good, cool. Um, so I, what I'm gonna do is I know people like to linger like when we're in church, so I'm gonna linger. If you guys wanna chill, chill. You don't have to leave. Um, but I hope you had a beautiful Sunday, and every Sunday, hopefully, it'll get better. Just so you know, the live feed kept cutting in and out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all of those on Facebook when we finish, and I'm going to put the I have a, a whole video recording of it from YouTube and all of that. So that'll go on that'll go on our Facebook pages. So Hello. On, let people know we'll be here. Um, so God bless you if you got a role. God bless you. We love you. I'm going to put you on unmute, and we can all we can all chill.